not me, but it's just to give you the idea of the type of sport that I played. So I was a junior in high school. Um, I'm actually a senior in high school now, so it's kind of a complicated story, but I had two concussions in 24 hours. Um, I wanted to play college soccer. That's been my dream since I was a little girl, and I tried to push through my initial symptoms thinking that I could do it. My symptoms got pretty severe. I went to the doctor. I took time off. I came back to soccer. I got two concussions just from heading the ball. And at that point, you can say that I was done. I ended up taking a medical leave from my high school. I came back to repeat my junior year. Um, I was forced to quit soccer and all contact sports. And I wasn't able to increase my heart rate for close to two years. Contact sports in the United States. I believe, really, that um, concussion awareness is the athlete as sexual education is the teenager. It needs to become an essential. There are 44 million student athletes participating in contact sports each year in the United States. That's 44 million students we're putting on the field that we are exposing to concussion. And the number of those, I mean myself included, that are going on the field without adequate knowledge is, is frightening. As if any of you are parents, um, I think that's a very scary idea. Um, what is a concussion? A concussion is an acceleration of the head that causes symptoms. This acceleration is calculated in G-force, and it usually causes the neck to whip back and forth, causing the skull, the, um, excuse me, the brain to bounce against the skull. So currently within the medical community, as you may be reading in the newspaper, there are many unknowns about concussions. But one thing we do know is that early recognition is crucial. So I'm the perfect example of why early recognition is crucial. We need to educate teachers, coaches, athletes, and trainers on the symptoms of concussion. We need to teach them the appropriate protocol and what to do when a concussion has occurred. We need to teach athletes the long and short-term risks of trying to play through their symptoms. And frankly, we need to educate them on diseases like CTE. I, don't, I can't explain that to you now. But they need to know what the consequences will be for them when they're in their 40s if they continue to have concussive and subconcussive blows. So initial con concussion symptoms can be extremely vague. The average athlete will tell you just something doesn't feel right. As listed on the slide, there are some very specific symptoms, but you only need to have had one of these symptoms for a concussion to have occurred. So over the past two years, I've been committed to spreading concussion awareness. I initially created a blog with the help of one of my classmates where I posted the latest news, research. You can see there was an area for the basics on concussions um, to try to teach my community about concussions. Unfortunately, the hits my blog, I think I was the only one reading it. So I thought, where do my friends spend their time? They spend their time on Facebook. So I decided to, everything I was posting on my blog, I decided to post on Facebook with the hopes that these links will show up in their newsfeed and maybe once a day or once a week or once a month they'll click on a link and they'll acquire just a little more knowledge on concussions. And as I learned from my own personal experience, a little bit of knowledge can go a long way. So I think the moral of all of this, and here are some more slides to kind of see what the page looks like. Um, the moral of this is that in physical education classes here in the United States, if we're going to put students on the field, they need to be properly educated, and they need to be able to identify their symptoms if they've had a concussion. Thank you.